But man, so such hype today. New England stepping up to the New plate. England, they are showing that they are still contenders. Yo, and shout outs to TV and a pair of cojones. Let me tell you, literally oh decided to stand on the sideline for about two full minutes before saying, you know what? I'm going I smell in. a dare. I'm going I smell in. a dare. <laughs> he that, smelled, was, that was a really ballsy dare. I'll give him that. He smelled fraudulence and he exploited it. That was nice. That was nice. So I, I'm happy for him. I'm also happy that Japanese are not really the salty type. Like, they lost, but they I, when the streams turned to them, they were still smiling. So good stuff to the Japanese. But that's another Japanese team down, my friend. That's that full out of losers right there. That's Mikaneko right there. Cairo out. They are out right now. And now we're going to see something that me and uh, Pierce were commentating on before. I believe this is Kikara and Suinoko versus right. Vex and who? Uh, the Puffster. Oh, ho, ho. the man. The man who took some KOTC tournament wins. The man who had <laughs> epically three-stocked M2K, if I remember not too correctly. Uh, he, he put in the work. I just didn't even know the Puffster was out. J, 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 J Puffs. That man, he might be the Jigglypuff for Brawl right now. Yeah, honestly, and it is so hype right now. As always, finally getting the chance to commentate with yet again another friend of mine, a great member of the Epic IBC. There it is, IBC. IBC TKO. That's so hot. What's good? I got too many crew names to put in front of my name. We just got the CT right now. All right, so it looks right. like we're getting this first match here on uh, on Final Destination. Definitely. And now Suinoko's got a lot to make up for because in his last set that we saw against Kane and um, Kool-Aid, unfortunately, he really got shut out. So he's going to have to take the role here and put in a lot of work. The thing about the thing about I really like about Vex's um, Game & Watch is that he does not care about dropping that key in. Like, he'll drop that key in at any given moment knowing that nobody will punish that regardless. Like, it's so good. I feel like he's dropping the keys already. And he is someone who's always had a great sense of confidence. I mean, at SKTAR, he was playing against Rich Brown, Olimar Day Today, and did an unbelievable job of making that matchup not look like the horror story it is. So, Vex, a player with a lot of knowledge and a lot of capability. One surprising thing I'm seeing right now is that I, I, for some reason, I thought the Puffster was actually going to go Jigglypuff, <laughs> but he's out here with this Diddy right now. So we got double Diddy on the screen. Yes, definitely. And I mean, he is holding it down at 76% West Tunoko. At 112 right now. Oh, and Vex with a nice bucket break right there. Avoid death. Dropping that key in real quick. Nice back air right there by uh by the Puffster. And definitely a great job by Vex and the Puffster right now to really just put in the teamwork against a single target and really tack up that damage. It's so important, especially like a Meta Knight named Kakara, who's gonna put in work. Definitely putting that work nice. And there it right is there. that key. That, that key drop. It's so confident. Oh, Oh, but he's living though. He's living. He's, he's living, living, definitely. All right, man, man, credit card. For, for, for a game and watch at 164, I mean, the man is going in right now. Oh, could not live off that one. There goes first stock right there. Game and watch losing stock at 175. That is actually really high for game and watch. Yes, definitely. Especially there were a kind of couple up over the top situations here. But the Japanese already off to a lead. Three stocks, green teams two. Oh my <laughs> god, and the Puffster definitely just got a kill with the upbeat rockets. Good stuff right there. Pulling a freebie real quick. <laughs> Checked it out. You know Suinoko's a little mad about that as he's going to check Vex and really take out some of that aggression as we see right now. The big thing about that, that, that upbeat kill, it hit him twice. It hit him at the beginning as it went through him and hit him off stage. And then when he got back on stage, it exploded. So good. I, I know you can't control that, but that was good random AI right there. Yes, definitely. I give him that. Taking advantage of that brawl randomizer, but <laughs> Green Team has a good amount of work to do, and they really need to get Kakara out of here as he is stock tanking and doing a very proficient job of it. Not fearful of Diddy's back throw. Oh, all right, good stuff right there by the Puffs is still living. Nice recovery, getting to the other side of the stage. Nobody's being able to stop him. Nice power shield. Oh, but he misses the grab right there. And there is a real vibe for some stage control right now as Red Team has really done a great job, to, despite the fact that Kakara is at 168. They are really holding it down in Suinoko. Fighting on that front line right now. And yeah, Swinoko right now uh, still has his, oh, Kakara actually, still has his uh, first stock. He's at 168 right now. The Green Team having a real hard time killing this man. And this, ooh, that could have been it with the get up attack clashes with F Smash. Oh, oh, so the luck that you have. All right, good back air right there by Swinoko. And Vex still living right now. Only got two stocks. The buffs are unfortunately getting gimped, but at 200. There we go. And a big cleanup from Vex as he nails the double kill to even up a little bit. Unfortunately, still at 157, though. A lot of room to make up for. 
And they're even stuck, so that's all he really needs right now. As long as he can put the damage to avoid his death. And there's the death right there. Back down to his last stock, as lo with, along with uh, the pumps at 57%. This man, they really need to step it up. They're trying to win this match. And a lot of momentum in Red Team's favor right now. I mean, they are really controlling the pace as Pex and the Puffster are sitting at one stock right now. Kakara never letting up on his role, though. Consistently stock tagging, only at 71. And the pace of this match is just really nice. I mean, we are seeing a constant back and forth, and I have not seen a slowdown as Vex nails an early kill to possibly bring it back right now. Yeah, this could be the comeback right here. That was a really nice kill by Vex. Vex only had 24, while both Diddy's are kind of at a high percentage, but not really in kill percentage yet. And wow, the Puffs are really doing a great job of corralling Kakara there and really just getting it on. Oh, oh wow, and God. there are bananas oh my everywhere. God, bananas are all <laughs> so real right now. Chiquita Banana seriously sponsoring Apex. <laughs> oh man, and Kakara really has to watch himself as he has dropped his stock tanking position and really just taking him a large sum of damage right now as the Puffs with a great follow-up. Oh my god, this could be the match right here. The Japanese have definitely dropped this match if they lose it right now. Kakara having to do a 2v1 right now. Diddy is in kill percentage by Meta Knight per se, but Game & Watch is not. And here it's we go, the Puffster and Vex, there we go. Taking control of one of the Bananas, really trying to make sure to minimize the Meta Knight stage, stage positioning, and Kakara just fighting to get some ground right now. He needs to make sure he gets off that ledge. All right, Kakara has now put uh, Game & Watch in a, re in a really high percentage right now. Kakara, oh! oh! Nice combo right there! Solid dash attack. Dash attack to fair, that was so nice. And he gets that kill, nice job by the Puffster right there. And now Suinoko and Kakara, I mean, this is a team that has lost a lot of momentum throughout the day, like I said, and they lost a big lead there. Kakara was doing a lot right. He was really doing so much damage. <laughs> and he was so right. He was in the uh, he had so little percent. He was playing roles. And I mean, I'm not sure what's going on, but I really think that Vex and the Puffster just broke them down. All right, it looks like they're doing a little port switch right here. I didn't know that was actually part of the rules. What? Yes, definitely. Counterpicking port Counter -picking priority. And port priority? Yes, okay. yes. That, well, I didn't really see a lot of port priority type things going on in well, that. Well, I mean, I think. However, it, you know, that, that's not, I, I, it's one of those things where players have been fighting for it all day, and today has been a day to show the mental, the mental capacity of these players. Whether or not port priority is playing a role, they are exercising their right to counterpick it and making sure that they get what theirs is when they get a chance. Because plain and simple, you want every advantage that this game will give you. We are playing Super Smash Brothers Brawl, and there sometimes are not many advantages to take. So, Definitely if it's on not. the table, if it's on the table, take it. So here you get that poor priority. That seems like they're going for the stage. They're trying to strike right, or not strike, but uh, counterpick. And sometimes this is so nerve-wracking. The Japanese take so much time and really just waiting to see. Zach, you want to come say next? You want to come say hello? Okay. Just wanted to make sure my boy Zach from two to Apex 2010. Me and Zach were the original Apex 2010 commentators. So Zach, a aka Coney, Zach Zeke. I just wanted to make sure he didn't want to commentate because that he means like, he's still good. He was one of the first people to give me the motivation to stay on the mic. The man was like, "I love your voice," and I was like, "Why? Thank you." I mean, like, like I said, there are just so many of the greats you that have done. the voice. Dude. You yeah. have the voice. I don't give it. I don't. I don't care what anybody says. You have the voice for commentary. So. Well, that's what I'm here for. And like I always say, shout out to class tournaments. Shout out to TKO and IBC, man. You guys created me, born and raised. I love getting a chance to come up here and work with all you guys. So shout out to everyone at home. Yo, shout out to the collared shirts right now, looking real professional out looking here. Looking professional like, as <laughs> hell right now. All right, so it looks like we're going. Is Mike Neko going to go deep? Oh, uh, well. I mean, and that's, we know that's not even Mike Neko. Nah, hey, hey, and it's okay. I know oh. there's been a lot. You know, like I said, we have a lot of the Japanese here this year, and I can definitely understand getting things a little mixed up because there are. This is the biggest international showing I think America has seen for Brawl, period. I mean, I said it. We got Chile. We got Mexico. We got Japan. We got Europe. I mean, we uh, we got Canada. We got East Coast, West Coast. They're all here, dude. I mean, I'm just going. Here. I need an atlas right now just to make sure I'm not missing areas. <laughs> All right, so they're taking it back to uh, Final Destination real quick. 
And the um, teams were running it back. They ran it back. Uh, that was Vex almost going DDD, but he decided to stay with Game Watch, which was a smart choice. I really feel like if he had went DDD, that would have been a big target to get bodied by both these characters. And, you know, him and Adam is very good friends and really are very, very, very in the concept that if players are well enough and, you know, versed in a matchup, even if it's a bad one, you definitely can make the best out of it. And they constantly display that as we're seeing Vex's Game & Watch go in right now. And going in, that man has dropped keys all day and has not been punished at all. And you know what? Shout out to the Puffster, though. This man has been so on point. Like I said, I hadn't seen much of his Diddy. I was not too well aware of his Diddy, but he's gone toe to toe. I and mean, as we saw, he finished clearing out game one so well. And right off the bat here, the percentages are very close. Red Team with a very minimalistic lead here as Vex looking for an up air punish for decades. That would have been so nice. This is much better than the first game that they had because Green Team was definitely down by a lot first game. It was a real strong comeback. But right now they're keeping it even, which is what they need to do if they want to steal the set. And I mean, what I'm noticing the Green Team is doing a great job of is they keep seeming to switch up who they're fighting. They're changing the matchup all the time and really forcing Red Team to stay on their toes. So yet again, Apex, the home of... Oh! Oh! Oh, oh, not the type of things you don't want to see. He tried to use the upbeat and it ends up killing Vex. Not the move right there by the Puffster. And the Puffster did get that luck game one with the upbeat kill, but unfortunately that time, a little bit of backfire and you leave it up to randomizers and the results will be just that random. All right, so good stuff right here by uh, Vex on the sideline. I thought he was going to go for it right there, but there's not much he can do. He's the gliding Meta Knight getting back on stage. And right now the Puffster Showing a lot of ledge controls. He really just holds Swinoko to the ledge with the mix up over to Vex. Vex, unfortunately, oh, and Pat G called and said, Sorry to Puster, but you need to clean that up. And now the group, uh, green team right now down by two stocks right now, but both red teams are pretty much in kill percentage right now by at the very least. Oh, and there's a double kill right there with the glide toss down smash. Good stuff, Vex. Very well back. spaced. What presence of mind to realize that he had the room and the space to do it. As there are three bananas now on the screen, and chaos looks like it is about to ensue. Right, Vex right now. Vex is so getting away. I don't know how he's getting away with this right here. He's doing up, up B to down air every time, and he's getting away with it every time. I mean, the man knows what he's doing, and gimmicks are gimmicks. So if you can abuse them to your advantage, please do. That's oh, Swinoko. Swinoko's kill right there by Vex. Vex on his last stock right now. However, uh, Swinoko's definitely down to a block kill by uh, DDD. And, oh, he's dropping. He and him not getting the kill, though. So much confidence. So not fierce. Vex, unfortunately, looking like he got a little bit mixed up in the in the tangle there as he managed to hit the Puffster and mess up that control that he had over Kikara. This is about the same. This is about the same scenario they were at last time. So maybe Green Team can pull it back once again. However, Red Team is playing a lot more solid than they were last game. A nice combo right there. Not the kill, but good damage. And sometimes that it may not be the kill, but the damage will lead to the kill right afterwards. So important right now. And Vex consistently playing the aggressor as Puffster <laughs> and Srinoko begin to exchange bananas left and right. Off stage right now. Will he get the game? Oh, so and close. So close. All right, that was that was a kill right there on the Puffster. The Puffster down to his last stock. Both uh, red team right now still in the second top. And Game Watch with a lot. Kind of in kill percentage. Yeah. Kind of in kill percentage. I mean, if it's off the top, it's going to be an ugly scenario. But as we know, the bucket break is going to allow him to live to somewhere above 130 to 150. So Vex definitely, definitely still living. Look like a Kara trying to get a little glide toss shenanigans going in there after the hype that Vex created. Vex trying to put it out. Oh, he grabbed the banana. Oh, trying to get the nice combo. Right and there. as I said, the pace has been consistent in this match. I mean, with two Diddy Kongs and all these bananas, it just creates so much mobility with the glide tosses. So much more hail. Unfortunately, the Puffs are missing a hard read right there to get the F smash. Oh, a nice key drop right there. He gets that kill. But no one's seeming to recognize the fact that Swinoko was at 220% with Diddy. So that was crazy. We, we might need to see a little bit more presence of mind from Green Team and really paying attention to percents because you cannot be having Diddy leaving at 220. Right, that was a bad throw right there by Swinoko. He kind of messed up Kakara's throw. Cool. But uh, it's all it's all good. Vex still in kill percent right now. He only needs to get hit by one good smash attack. Maybe even a maybe even an F air. And he gets the kill right there on Kakara. Can they pull this back right now? They're both at high percentage. Red team both at low percentage. They have to do a lot of work. Oh my god, he's got to go for the nine right there. And man, would that have been the day. 
Oh man, ah. Vex has got a lot of room to make up for. And Game & Watch, with such strong, quick smashes, you know, Vex really keeping those options thrown out there. Oh my wow. Oh! Wow. Godlike! Godlike! <laughs> and man, unfortunately the Japanese did not get a chance to convert on that. They got a little anxious, but still demonstrating the sheer tech skill that these guys bring in. Oh my, I've As never Chibo, seen that. Chibo NTK. Oh wow. And they I've it. never seen that. <laughs> I can say I that got That was hype. And you know what, I have to say, that's the first time that I've seen Suinoko and Kakeri utilize that today. And teamwork like that is going to be something that's going to win matches as we saw there. So this is a really important game three right now. I am really liking, the, what, what I'm really liking about this team right now is the fact that whenever the Japanese lose, they will go back to the stage to prove that they can beat you. And I am re I respect that. That is, that is, that, I'm not going to say this is an American thing, but I know like that's maybe not the salty run back. They just want you to know that at any given moment, they can step it up and beat you. So and gonna, yeah. let's see what the counter pick is right here do between Vex and the Puff. Do that salty run back check real quick. That salty you know? run back. <laughs> but man, they had they had they had. Sorry, pardon me. The hype is getting to me here. But they had Chibo throwing his hands in the air over on the stream there, still shaking that off. So real. And so much today. Just so much from these players. Goodness, man. Radio Influence, you are shouting us out a lot, and I, I want to thank you for getting our names out there right now. You shouted out me and Pierce, and then me and Kuntel. Me and Kuntel are, are grateful for what you're doing right now on Twitter. Good Two stuff. Thumbs up. Keep it up. Two thumbs up, man. I roll up the sleeves to you, sir. There's no way around it. There's no way it's <laughs> happening. But yeah, man, about to get the hands dirty in this game. Yeah, three that's, that, right that's now. that business casual right that's here. It, like, that's you know, what it is, man. I was knee deep in stocks before I came here. Right? <laughs> Wall Street. <laughs> But man, oh man, oh man, yet again, shout outs to Chibo, shout outs to Apex, shout outs to the wonderful commentary we got going this year. You have seen so many faces thus far, and I am just absolutely just in I, awe, man. So many people have stepped up to the plate and just done a phenomenal job. And the these commentary players, right now is and not like these, so. these players have given us so much to work with, man. Exactly. Like, this isn't like a regular tournament. These are all hype matches that have been on stream. And I want to thank that because sometimes matches get a little unhyped and people get mad at commentators for not being able to hype it. But sometimes it just it's really hard to hype. And that's but what these it is. matches right now are the hypest matches I've seen in quite some time. Like I just I can if you ask me what my favorite match was, I might be able to tell you, but it's gonna be a serious debate, man. It, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be thinking for a second. Exactly. And there is gonna be reflection on it. So man, all right, here we go. It looks like game three is just about to be decided as we're waiting to see the puffster breaking it out. Oh my goodness. Oh and Chimo hands on the face. Hype, oh, hype, snap. hype, hype. Break it out the puff. Let's man. see how this goes. I oh, has he, oh, he has that first grab. That was a he, he just rolled right in and said, hey, FYI, I got footstools. I got aerial mobility. I may not got a whole bunch of life, but you know what? We in there. We going. Oh. Now, this is a matchup we're going to need to see minimization of, though. The I, I, our minimizing of. I do not want to see Puffster versus Kakara. I mean, Vex has done an unbelievable job of sticking it to Kakara and doing a great job. But Meta Knight Jigglypuff, I mean, 09 ended a long time ago. <laughs> I, but to be honest, though, the rollout, now I'm thinking about the rollout makes up might actually be the play. Because the rollout, the, the percentage of rollout that hit in teams is a lot more than the percentage of the rollout that well, hit in And the kill percentage on that. Oh, ooh, that was, that was, you know what? I want to give it to Red Team right there for hitting that banana right there. He definitely he wouldn't have got hit if he didn't get hit by banana. And you know what? Friggin' is definitely going to add to that with low ceilings, man. Game & Watch gets a lot more destructive. And if you aren't paying attention, teams are going to get kind of scary. So the Puffs are needing to make up a lot of room here as we see Red Team both underneath 100% and very much assuming stage control right now. Yeah, I have to say right now, though, this might have been kind of looking like a bad pick for the green team because, uh, and I'm thinking about it, and unless they get some really jank setup, the puffs, uh, the puffs is not really going to be getting the kills. So we're going to leave it up to, uh, to to Vex to get the kills, and sometimes that's just not possible with this type of team like this Japanese team now. And this is going to be a hard stage to really control the matchup on, you know? Like, as we see there, it's going to be really hard for Green Team to separate away and make it so that Vex can fight Kakara and the Puffster can fight Suinoko. And even so, I don't think Suinoko's scared of Jigglypuff right now. I think he's sitting there saying, we in there. We're yeah, ready. like, you're just Jigs. Like, I'm not scared of you at all. That was, I want to give I want to give that man the shout out for that, uh, that back air, though. Uh -huh. And the roll out. Had to pull that back real quick. Yeah. Wasn't getting anywhere for that one. Oh. 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 
up. Oh my god, he's already down in his last now, stop. I, I've seen a lot of matchups today that the Japanese weren't ready for, but I'm telling you right now, there has been nothing about the Puffs and Jigglypuff that has shown me that Japan isn't ready for this as Kikero puts on that quick 30%. I mean, to be honest, I bet you that Japanese don't even play this matchup, but it's just the fact that it's Jigs. Like, it, there's not much, there's not much depth to Jigs as you would want it to. So, like, once you figure out, you can probably figure out in one match. And there's the rollout. He gets that first rollout kill. Good stuff right there by Puffster. And the Puffs just need to get it. Okay, all right. So a little bit of cleanup from Green Team. Only down by about a stock now. Unfortunately, the Puffs are though already at 40, percent and that's a lot for Jigs. That is a lot for Jigs right there. And that is a 62. Man, basically in kill percentage. Like, yeah. like that's that's a real problem right now. Real, real talk, it's a little hard to say that he isn't. Ooh, there goes the kill wow. right there on Vex. Gets that gets that board of power shield and then gets that takes that nair to the face. And Kikara really asserting dominance in this round. Really, really feeling it out and not too worried as oh the puffster. Oh Suinoko messing that up. Yeah, no, that was that was a bad punish on the, on the fact that he rested. That was a that was a clean charge smash right there, but both of them messed that up. Yeah, the Puffs there. Waiting. Waiting right now. Yeah, he's gonna, to, he's gonna have to play the defensive game right now at 107. He's definitely gonna have to watch out where he's going because the minute he gets hit, that might be get that in any given hit might be game for him. And now why the Puffster did land a rollout kill. Man, oh, oh he's, he's living though. He's living, but he's got a lot of work to put in. I mean, he's definitely sitting on top of more deaths than kills right now, and unfortunately, I don't think Vex is about that life. Oh, oh, and there goes the up right there. That was that sure you can up He was like, you hit my shield, it's over. Like, and like we said, unfortunately, that may have just been a rough matchup, but the Japanese definitely utilizing Frigate to their advantage and Jigglypuff's weight to the Puffster's disadvantage. Yeah, I don't think that this, this might, have, might have not been the play for the Puffster. Like, his Diddy was doing fine. I don't understand why he had to switch. I think it might have. Now, I mean, we've talked about this a bit, me and Pierce, and I really have to say, people are looking for some swaps. They really want to mess with mentality. And you know what? Hype can get the best of anybody. So, I mean, it may have been a hype decision, but in the end, it definitely didn't pan out very well. Not at all. Now it's up to Bex to actually take three stocks, but he's at 93%. While both of these guys... Meta Knight, right now, he's, he, I mean, he could probably die to an up smash, but it has to be at a good moment. And right now, Diddy Kong is sitting on two stocks, so either way, Vex has a hard battle ahead of him if he actually plays. It's an uphill battle because if you kill the Meta Knight, he's just going to share stock. And there it is. is. Oh, man, and this is just a matter of time before That's it happens. And the fact that they are sacrificing damage to themselves just to know that they're going to get this free kill. Oh, <laughs> and he grabs the wrong way, and he still gets it. And yeah, there Game of Watch was well in it. They, they were just well aware that bucket breaking can happen. That's hot tech. That, that's Japanese tech right there. Now yes. you're going to see that in a couple of a couple American streams after this. Yeah, that's going to happen. You know that there's going to be Zenito and a couple people stealing that real quick. <laughs> that was. I, I want to give him that, though. That was real nice. But that was real nice. Shout-outs to the Puffster and Vex put on a great show in there. But unfortunately, that adaptation and that evolution right there of Kakara and Suinoko to make sure that they stayed in here. And that would have been quite the sight.